Desa yang paling dekat. Apaka aman mendaki gunung ini? I'm trying. If we haven't met yet, uh, my name is Jordan Newton, and I'm the chief spiritual formation officer this year at FLY. But what I want to tell you about today is living as a Christian. This week we begin our first video and our first topic. And the topic is, what is health? What does it mean to be healthy? What does it mean to be well? This is a broad topic for this week. And in future weeks, we will start to get into the specifics of stress management, emotional health, spiritual health, and of course, physical health. How this will work is that I will take a series of videos from YouTube your job is to watch the videos, take notes, and on the Living as a Christian classroom, post a few things that you have learned. You should do this before the Monday night Living as a Christian meeting time with your RA. As an example, I made the due date or the time the assignment is due for Sunday nights. Again, living as a Christian class is more of a discussion than a serious class. But I do want to see that students are learning. So please look at the Living as Christian Google Classroom and complete any work by Sunday nights. So, it's time to get started with our first videos on what is health. Remember, these are videos I have taken from YouTube and not my own content. So it is possible that some of the content will be incomplete or maybe content you disagree with. So let's begin the journey. Ways to be healthier. There are many different things in our lives that contribute to being healthy or being healthier. In this video, I'm going to go over seven major factors that contribute to leading a healthier life. Number one, eat better. So I think this one's kind of a given. We have all at some point seen some reference to research that links poor nutrition to many diseases, a lesser quality of life, and a shorter lifespan. Good quality foods such as fruits and vegetables provide our bodies with energy, vitamins, minerals, and fiber, which in turn enhance proper bodily function. Number two, exercise. Research has shown that exercise can decrease your risk of many diseases and enhance your quality of life. It can also improve your mental health, strengthen muscles and bones, help to control your weight, prevent falls, get better sleep, improve memory, give you more energy, and most importantly, increase your chances of living longer. Number three, move more. Just moving your body can improve your health. With the advancements in technology, sedentary lifestyles have gotten greater and greater. Phones, tablets, and being able to watch TV anywhere, anytime, has brought everyday bodily movement to an all-time low. Moving your body more can improve circulation, oxygen use, heart health, and sleep. 
Number four, sleep better. Lack of sleep has been linked to an increased risk of many diseases as well as lack of productivity. Good quality sleep has been shown to improve memory, decrease stress, increase creativity, and increase athletic performance. Number five, spend time with people. Lack of social connections has been shown to increase stress, impair immune system function, and cardiovascular function. Having strong quality connections with other people improves self-confidence, mental health, and energy levels. Number six, exercise your brain. When we're young, going to school and learning math, science, and history, our brain is being challenged and stimulated regularly. As we get older and get set into a regular routine and exercise our brains less and less, we process information more slowly and our working memory diminishes. Your brain benefits from learning new things, taking part in new activities, and interacting with other people. Your brain, like muscles and joints, needs to be exercised. Number seven, decrease stress. Stress can cause fatigue, lead to sleep problems, overeating, alcohol abuse, and depression, all of which can negatively affect your health. Learning to manage stress in your life is a must. Reducing stress in your life can improve energy levels, improve your ability to focus on tasks, improve your relationships with others, and most of all, severely increase happiness. Living a healthier life leads to living a happier life. Self-reflection is a powerful tool to improving your life. So take a look at each of these seven factors and see which ones you can improve on. In the future, I'll be posting videos giving you some ideas on how to improve on each of these to help you out. This video is looking at the dot point meanings of health. This is the first dot point for better health for individuals. Your syllabus says that you need to learn about the definitions of health, the dimensions of health, and the relative and dynamic nature of health. You also need to learn to examine the dynamic nature of health by exploring the interactions between the dimensions, the concept of good health, the health continuum, how health changes over time, and how an individual's circumstances affect their health. Each person has their own subjective definition of health, but if you Google definitions of health, one of the first definitions to come up is that health is a state of being free from illness or injury. However, this is a very old definition. The World Health Organization has an updated definition from 1948 stating that health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Today, we have added emotional and spiritual well-being to this definition. These additions are known as the dimensions of health. The dimensions of health include physical health, which refers to the human body, mental health, which refers to the cognitive aspect of health, and is often confused with emotional health, which is the person's mood or general emotional state, and it refers to the ability to recognize and express feelings adequately. Social health refers to our ability to make and maintain meaningful relationships with others, and spiritual health which relates to our sense of overall purpose in life. You'll learn to identify that the dimensions are all interrelated, that is, they have an effect on each other. If one suffers, they all do. For example, if someone is physically sick, they need to avoid social settings to not let other people get infected, which can lead to emotions such as sadness. Health is both relative and dynamic. Relative refers to our continual comparison of health status. This can be by comparing an athlete to a fat drunk guy, or simply comparing my health today with my health one year ago. The dynamic nature of health is about how health changes. Health can change slowly, such as when a person grows older, or rapidly when there is a change in circumstance, such as a person losing their job, resulting in less frequent contact with friends, decreased mental stimulation, and the feeling of being alone and sad, which could lead to depression. Often people will use a health continuum to rate their health, where one end represents the worst health you can think of, and the other represents the best. So I might, for instance, put myself here. So, what does good health look like to you?